So that's it. We are recording. <laughs> that's for okay, sure. Okay, <laughs> cool. I will write the word here inside because this is our topic today. Mm -hmm. So we don't lose track. We don't lose sight of it, let's say. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, are we comfortable with the size of our alleged paper? Yeah, we can stretch. It's not an issue. Yeah. There we Oops, go. Sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> So. so I've been thinking about insight and what actually struck me the other day is that in the past this used to be the the world of the shamans and uh, if we really link insight to um, intuition and instinct uh, it's almost like a borderline with the magic mm -hmm. all those uh, voodoo type of um, yeah ideas and connections so something like that I was like um, we, we just call it these days inside, but uh, it's no far fetched from that. Hmm. That's so interesting. That, yeah. that, that kind of, you, you, you know, you're right, because there, <clears throat> there is something, for lack of a better term, magical about insight. There's, hmm. There seems to be something that just suggests it's something different, something almost exciting or... Um, that I, I find so intriguing by the term insight. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. There's our frame. Maybe we need to lock the frame in place. There we go. <laughs> For a bit. <laughs> I, um, I, I, did a, I did a collaborative workshop uh, last week. I was hosting one, and I realized I forgot to do that, and all the participants were dragging everything around and <laughs> panicking, and they, they never used this before. So, <laughs> See, this is the nightmare of... Uh, I think, I think you're uh, onto something very interesting about how the lack of insight could actually create more, uh, I don't know... Uh, downsides to your experience more so than the insight itself as a desirable experience so i'm thinking you know we are very prone to look for insight and just like Krasi said you know there's this mysticism surrounding it and there, there are these people with a keen sight they are their intuition is on such a high level uh but i was thinking about the other people who are not so keen who don't have a strong intuition who may be very caught up in other things you know in a foggy uh reality and i came across this uh, article about illnesses and disorders and how hard it is for some uh, psychiatrists to explain to their patients that they are ill or they have mm. a certain disorder and the patient simply doesn't understand and doesn't want to like take up the treatment or even try to just because it denies that he denies the reality and that is due to lack of insight really understanding the implication of that are you guys drawing yeah <laughs> well <laughs> i'm trying to visualize what I have in mind about insights. It's, uh, uh. you know, th that's weird because you talk about this uh, insight as based on intuition and, and mad, you know, this kind of uh, magical realm. But, but at the same time, it is, you know, in the business world, it's, it is used as, as facts, you know, as uh, insights as a uh, higher value than many other things, you know, it, it, it comes to this feeling of, of uh, truthness in, uh, in what we can extract from reality, right? Mm -hmm. Well, at the same time, it's what we are just discussing here is highly subjective. Uh, and, and it's kind of uh, contradictory, you know, in, in some way. 
But even in the business context, it is highly subjective and it can be highly manipulative. So yeah, indeed. It, it yeah. just depends of uh, what is your goal and what type of picture you want to paint. But uh, I, I think especially when it's so factual, you even have more freedom to, to manipulate and um, drive your own agenda mm -hmm. to serve to serve whatever purpose you have. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, our culture became so insights driven, almost as if without insights, we can't see past through through things um, mm -hmm. to find the innovative angle of it. And I really wonder why. Maybe it's because of the so much information in the world. There's so much insight in our side that we <laughs> don't have insights anymore or we do uh, but it's just yeah. very hard to see past it uh, and i think this is one effect of our current culture i was talking the, the other day about the war and how we tend to take for granted the ne negative effects of the war and it's true yes it was a horrible war the, the, the great like both the first and the second and it was simply terrible that so many people had to die. There were no winners, in fact. Uh, but this is only from a perspective of awakening. This insight was possible uh, when people were in the trenches, when they spent a whole year in the trenches and mm. there was one battle of you know, nearly half a million soldiers dropping dead. That was a, a realization. And at the same time, it really built up on a new world. A new. I think that's that's what insights are. You know, the, this these building blocks of change. You finally can move on past that glorifying scene of war and patriotism and nationalism, and you know, it's, it begins to crumble. The powers, the monarchy, begin to crumble in a very dreadful manner. But there was, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel was in that. Uh, yeah, dreadful situation. Yeah, <clears throat> there's also a t yeah, there's a, but there's a there's a time feature to insight. Is mm -hmm. that I, I think what constitutes an insight is also bound somewhat by time. Like I think we have different insights about what happened with the, if we take the war now than we did immediately afterwards. Mm. And then, and and they may be just different or extensions, but there's because what we can see is patterns. It, it's 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 a, to me it, it's about revealing, it's about it's about revealing something in a pattern mm -hmm. that comes to us, or we discover, or we stumble upon. Yeah, and I think that the somewhat by time, like as as we get all these other all this other information that comes to us through all these other things, it starts to reveal new patterns. And then of course it builds on to other insights and connections and, and things. Mm -hmm. But just to go back to what Krasi said about how it's so uh, magic, it, it reminded me now of the Eureka moments, you know, mm -hmm. how exciting it is just the story of it, the fact that, you know, Archimede or Newton, they just, they weren't even looking for it and the world kind of revealed to them. And I think yeah. that's the beauty of insight yeah. and why it's, it feels so powerful. It just doesn't make any sense to us. Yeah. It's a, it's a tough place because if indeed we, we look at insights like the intersection between the visible and the invisible, we are almost, we have to split ourselves and one side of us, as Kevin spoke about, stays in the rationality towards the facts, but the other side of us is more um, swimming around imagination and possibilities and all those things that is in our head. So um, mm -hmm. how to, this thin line that we constantly walk when we say we're working on insights, it's uh, yeah, it's a very slippery ground. <laughs> yeah, I, I love this this I, what you said before. What that, that insight is is uh, a revelation on our side that we make we make sense of um, of something that 
that is that was messy for us and or something like that this idea that it it's that we recognize something that makes sense to us that took form in a certain way that we can we can now we know that we can act on it or there's in, there's a relationship to insights and action in some way because it's it's not just that we understand something but it has a relationship with what we can do with it uh that that feels more probably more practical than just data you know it's just not information it's insight you know yeah because also to some extent data never moves us whereas yeah. insight is kind of uh also packed around a story and then this mm. action that you spoke about becomes easier otherwise mm -hmm. if we have no relationship to the data yeah almost meaningless mm -hmm. that's that important i think that that's a really <laughs> that's an important insight <laughs> the, idea, the idea of story, but I, I think narrative, yeah. I think the, the difference between an, an insight and a di discovery, which are often the same, but I think is that there's a, there's a story. It fits into a story or it challenges a story or it extends a story, but somehow it's not just, it, it, it's a thing that connects a bunch of other things that we've now been able to put into a story. And that that's a that's a I think different than if it's just some type of pattern. We go, oh, isn't that interesting? But it doesn't really, mm. you know, like scientists will often come back to data, the things that they've discovered years ago, but they didn't have a meaning for it. And only retrospectively do they go back and go, oh, well, there's a whole meaning to this. And um, you know, whereas an insight, I think, is something that you know it when you see it. It's often not retro. It can involve retrospectiveness, but I, I think the idea that, that it becomes an insight when it's that, aha, I've discovered something or I've uncovered mm. something. I have a story behind it. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. It, though, so in some way, what you are saying is that an insight is something that can be narrated or told that can be recalled in as a story because i don't feel like any every story is necessarily an insight but i agree with you that insights are, are no, to be part fair of... i mean uh, this the storytelling of the insights i mean mm. my personal experience with them is you know i get so excited about these insights sometimes and i'm like these are coincidences and you know the universe is aligned now but then i try to explain <laughs> it to someone and it's absurd it's just like a very weird story mm. so actually the narrative of an insight doesn't do justice to it you really need to work hard to bring it into meaning mm -hmm. you know i'm thinking about einstein and his uh, theory of relativity formula. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, it looks clean and nice and it looks like an insight if, you know, you are to uh, filter it through this perspective. But actually, if you try to prove it, that's just, you know, a very circumvaluted and really strange formula that you will perhaps mm -hmm. never get to truly understand. But mm -hmm. you have the insight, which is mm -hmm. this, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's funny with, uh... Einstein is that you realize that there's a high uh, there's a, a, a link between you know how he framed some of his of his thoughts as a thought experiments and how he came to you know the models he he thought it, yeah he he saw through the the, the experiments so th those are as well linked to stories again you know it's he played with uh, thought ex experiments and came to understand how, for instance, gravity works. Uh, and then he applied it to, to math and, and tried to represent it as math, uh, yeah. as ma 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 mathematical models. So what you're yeah. saying is that the story comes first and then the, the rationale aspect helps us convey mm. easier with the others 
otherwise uh, they may be lost. <laughs> Yeah, probably. Maybe it works both way, both ways, right? It's it's like he he saw something with the with the logical, but couldn't really grasp it. And when he played with the story aspect, what he can he could create as a story around it, it makes sense. It made sense, and then he translated it back to the logical. I don't know, maybe something like that. Yeah. Because I don't feel like it's necessarily two different. Well, one thing needs to be to come first, but yeah. Well, what's interesting is that in an insight, I think, is is in a way creates incoherence, mm. coherence through incoherence. <laughs> so it <laughs> it it challenges something, but yet adds to the story because if it if it's if it's just a if it doesn't fit with in any way with what we already know i don't think we can appreciate it i think it's very difficult like it's it he had to be able to like even quantum rev you know relativity those sorts of things were still anchored to something else like he was using previous examples in a just a new way with a, this is his thought experience who's so mm. he could trace it back so you could you could follow his story whether you believed it or not was probably a whole other story but, but <laughs> there was a there was a lot you could follow him yeah and i think that's that's the thing that that made that so interesting so insight was uh, you know i think a prerequisite for insight was to question the reality that was taken for granted for 400 years People were just, you know, uh, certain that Newton was right. Yet, yeah. you know, Einstein was ignorant enough to perhaps question <laughs> that, and you know, he found out something. So uh, I'm actually thinking about, you know, the the strategic world, the designers' world, where uh, insights are very valuable pieces of the puzzles yeah. in any project. Uh, and I'm thinking how. How do designers look for insights, or how do they recognize them? What what is the? Hmm. Yeah, that's that, that's a, that's actually it's a very uh, interesting question. How do they recognize that? I. I yeah, that, that's something with curiosity and you know naivety or how how do you say that and um, na naivety something Naiv like that yeah. yeah well i i i don't think the prerequisite is to be you know unaware of something but to put aside at least to put aside what you know of it and be curious on what are the perspectives so i think i feel like when we do when we want to come with to come to to discover insights, we are in a path of, you know, curious learners. So we we put aside our pr previous knowledge of of, some, of something and try to act as we don't know anything. But then we need still this uh, you know uh, this background to make sense of what we are you know, uh, discovering because you cannot organize uh, the information you, you, you extracted if you don't have any anything to relate to uh, within. So you, you need both a previous knowledge, but you need also to be like kind of a blank slate at some point on, on it, you know? It's like a weird uh, in between, something in between, I don't know. I feel like uh, we we actually when we work on a, a certain projects insights happen when we give some room for ourselves to be surprised. Yeah. At least this is my experience. So when I uh, when I approach it hoping uh, in the project that I'll surprise myself, then I think the insights really happen and they're very powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, but it does require certain vulnerability. 
Mm -hmm. especially uh, battling this not knowing state and trying not to know when you really want to know <laughs> uh, where this is heading uh, and, and, and it's difficult. Yeah. Insights come with uh, a lot of uh, actually hard work that somehow appear easy but there is nothing easy yeah. uh, about yeah. that. That journey, that journey is, uh, is quite, uh, quite taxing. Yeah. It's kind of uh, repressing your urge to come to conclusions and, uh, you know, forcing yourself to remain in this state of uh, uncertainty, um, not knowing, at least, not necessarily uncertainty, yeah. but not knowing, which is hard uh, to do, especially in organizations where efficiency is, <laughs> is, is, you know, the world. <laughs> well, Kev, Kevin, that's actually, the, the efficiency part is actually quite important, I think, because I, I've done this with, with clients as well, mm -hmm. where you realize the constraint of the brief and the mm -hmm. context of which they're operating in often is in some unintentional way designed to minimize insights. Mm -hmm. In the mm -hmm. sense that if, if, if they were really open to the idea of having real insights, um, they would set the brief up differently. I, I don't, and I don't believe it's yeah. conscious necessarily, yeah, yeah. but it's this idea that, well, we want, we want something different. We just don't want it to be too different. <laughs> and we don't really want you to, to point out some things that are, that are difficult for us. Um, yeah, because oftentimes I, I find myself, and, and this isn't always true, but it, I do find a lot of times I I work with a client, and what the story is at the beginning of the of the brief, and then towards the end is so different. At the beginning is that we're really open to change, we're interesting, and we want to do something innovative. We're tired of doing things the same, mm -hmm. and yet despite all the effort that goes into this. At the end, the things that they are moving towards are things that are very similar for them, most comfortable for them. The things they've ignored are generally those things that, that maybe might have been where the, the greatest insights were. Yeah. But the then efficiency here is often measured through the metrics that the organization, you know, uh, defines. So if the efficiency for you is to come to you know, quickly to a solution and, and uh, I don't know, uh, deliver on, specific, on something specific predefined, then you don't open the, the you know, you don't create this space for, to be surprised, in fact, as, you, as we discussed. We, yeah. You, you push the, but you prefer to like, ignore. You prefer to ignore. If what, we think that this is not really an insight, I guess mm -hmm. we need a different word for these shortcuts that organizations prefer to take mm. uh, to almost protect the meaning of insight because mm. insight shouldn't be um, shouldn't be undersold like that. Um, I don't know. Well, what's interesting, like, so for example, an insight. I think one of the 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 issues that that we find is that an insight is somewhat judged by its both value and its values. So mm -hmm. if, a, if, a, if an organization has an insight that it's actually harming its, um, its staff by its practices, its policies and procedures are actually harming the well-being of its team, um, it may not want to welcome that because that becomes expensive. It becomes a reason for doing culture change. But but if, if, if you told the organization, well, your insight might be you know, your team has more talent than you realized. They might mm. like that idea. So like, well, this is mm. great. This is something we can exploit and use. Uh, I, and, uh, but if, if the insight is um, you have a lot of talent, uh, it could be exploited better. But the reason it's not is because you effectively treat them so terribly. And if you don't <laughs> give them the support <laughs> that you need, they may be less comfortable with that. <laughs> But going back to the nature of insights, why they feel so good, it's because yeah. they kind of open themselves up to, you know, they come at the right time, whether we were expecting them or not. They are mm -hmm. the solution, the, you know, that immediate step that you need to take, that mm -hmm. clarity. No, I don't think an insight would uh, make you feel overwhelmed in terms of 
taking decisions based on it. At least that's how I feel whenever I uh, I am faced with insights. But I think you're right. You know, sometimes we might actually decide to ignore insights. We are presented with this gift, which is a gift to ourselves, our hard work, let's say. And then mm. we feel fearful. We don't know what to do. We give it too much time, you know, to grow cold. So if you build on the insight, I think in the moment you got it and you constructed a frame for it to, you know, keep up the momentum, I think that's much healthier than leave it go cold. Mm -hmm. So there's a timeliness to action, what you're yeah. saying. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Because sometimes I used to write my insights, and if I go back to the insights I had, you know, I'm like, what the hell? Why? Why did I <laughs> care about these things? Yeah. You know, I grew out of it. You know, I yeah. they were just stepping stones, but they weren't the things that I was meant to identify my problems so, or my future with. So, so insights are meant to die at some point. Yes, they're just what's inside, yeah. and what's inside can always change. I think yeah. we shouldn't grow too attached. Yeah, that, that, that means something at a specific point in time in your process of... You and there might be relevant only to you, not yeah. to everyone sure. else. Yes. Sure. Uh, so it's a process of gaining a new perspective or a new view on what you, or, on a specific context. So it's a, it's a, it's a mm. process of, you know, if you want to use the term of changing your man's mindset, I don't like this term specifically, <laughs> but this is what we we commonly hear in this aspect. So, so yeah, they are the triggers to this change, and they mean something only because of this trigger, this this change of perspective, and then your capacity to act towards this change. And also, they they mean something now. Yeah. They don't. They probably would not mean that uh, a little bit later. So mm. actually, not doing anything with them. I really like this idea of the expiry because uh, these yeah. insights. I, I think in general we don't quite capture well the timing aspect of it. And when we discover something, we we mm -hmm. get so excited that we think it's valid forever, but probably not. So. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a fickle phenomenon, I think, uh, compared to our tendency to consolidate and get comfortable. And, you know, there's this essentialist view that there is, you know, things have to be universal. There's a truth. Mm. There's... Whereas insight is like, yeah, there is a truth, but the form of it and how it unfolds in front of your eyes, it's always a fleeting moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and in, for creativity, I think this is enlightening to understand that ideas are not yours. They are not to be kept inside your head. I think I, I, I notice a lot of people who get these like writer's block or they just feel like they're not creative. They, they're not creative enough. They don't have enough yeah, ideas. Yeah. And I found that baffling. And, you know, I asked myself, am I creative? <laughs> am I creative enough? Do I have enough ideas? And I think I have so many ideas because they're all floating around. They're not mine. I can, yeah. I'm free to always create an idea. So I, why should I keep them, you know? But, but it seems like ideas can be, you know, can add up and can be moved around. But, 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 but insights, uh, what, from what we, we are discussing, in, insights are not, you know, you cannot add, up, add insights on top of insights because they are, you know, temporary. They, they... Yeah, exactly. That's what I was saying. The insight I had was that ideas are not meant to be possessed and crystallized. You know, ideas yeah. Yeah. in terms of creative ideas, like mm. just like inspiration. Mm. I, I think you can put insight on top of insight as long as the previous insight actually only turns into an idea. So the minute that it became uh, an idea, yeah, yeah, when, yeah, when yeah. it becomes an idea, then mm. of course you can build on top of it, but. 
uh, yeah, I think we we usually fall into this trap uh, in the language saying that mm. we use previous insights to generate new insights. Yeah. And we are always mm. into these insights, but yeah. they were I've transformed. never heard that these insights are no longer insights because something else happened. So we yeah. rarely do the uh, spring cleaning of insights mm. as <laughs> a great space for, um, for extra. I like this idea that they, they were transformed in some way into ideas, into concepts that we can play with. And they, they are no longer just insights, you know? Mm. Because because you that means you, that's normal to lose some of the insights mm -hmm. or the value of the insights in, when in the process of transformation into ideas. Uh, you know, it has, it makes sense. Like you, you have, a, let's say you, you, you do research in the context and you, you discover, I don't know, just for saying, okay, uh, 10 or 15 <laughs> insights. Okay. But then you use just four of them because you created uh, ideas that can, that can, you know, uh, pretty well, uh, uh, un uh you know, um, englobe the, um, the previous package of insights you know so you don't um, need the, the granularity you had before you just need the concepts and the ideas to play with i don't know something like that you yeah know? It, it happens so so often that you you have a lot of many things but then you can summarize it yeah. in some way into a, an idea that everyone can play with that feels more e easy to to do the than just yeah. keeping all the insights and saying all these references <laughs> are what we are using now to discuss. It's like, you know, it's a... Yeah. Well, there is, there's a, you know, in what you're saying there is, is there's um, some utility. Mm. So the insights being able to use them, you know, or they'll expire. And I think that that, to come back a, a little further, um, Diana, what you were saying is this idea almost the, something sparked to me, sort of this idea that, you know, people are a little afraid, perhaps, to mm -hmm. share. You know, this idea, like you, you mentioned, the idea of like writer's block, and I, and I think about writer's block, and and people, writer's block is really just fear of doing mm -hmm. not not great writing. Like um, the author, you know, and speaker Seth Godin talks about the idea that there's no such thing as plumber's block. A plumber does not come in and go, I, 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 can't, I can't do the pipes today because I just don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not feeling it. And, and yet we, we call writer's block. We give people an excuse. <laughs> and you realize that great writing is made up of bad writing, if you want to call yeah. it that. Like, you know, like our, um, you know, so, but we, we feel like this obligation, like an insight, e even the idea of an insight, I, I think has this, this obligation to the word uh, with some people, I think is like, well, it's got to be really important. Mm. And it may just simply be, nope, that's, <laughs> it's just, it, it's new. It's, it's a new way of looking at something and it may have value or the value may not be determined right now. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, that, like, here, here's an insight that I, I just had. It's it's definitely not new. Um, and I, per, Kevin, I don't know if you posted it up on the Slack channel or where I discovered it. I can't remember where I got the, the idea. And, and I should probably have posted it if if it wasn't there. But have you ever seen the, the, the YouTube channel Veritasium? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. So he had an episode that he created about a month and a half ago, but the hundred year light bulb. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin, yeah, did you post that or have you yeah, seen I it? Think, I think it, I, I shared it in, in the Slack, yes. It, yeah. it might have been, I, I can't remember whether I discovered it through that or whatever it is. But anyway, the idea is, is the effectively the insight for me was, we know how to make a light bulb that may never burn out in our lifetime, mm -hmm. ever. So the, the story is effectively that they have a they have an old bulb that is has been kept on for over almost like a hundred years or something like that, and the reason is is that um, and, and what I, I thought was so interesting about that episode was is that he approached it the way I did initially was like there's got to be a catch, there's something <laughs> wrong here, and then as he went and looked into it he realized that no actually we know how to do that, it's just there's no way to make money off of it. Or, or there's, a, there's a way to make a lot of money and then nothing because effectively everyone will just have light bulbs that, that just never burn out. And I thought, like, to me, that was really insightful. 
is how just the extent to which we design for obsolescence. Mm -hmm. And and you know we like I tend to think about that much more around the idea of uh, computer technology and stuff because software and stuff and Apple got caught a few years ago slowing down its older you know devices to to make way for new stuff. But it's really interesting. Just just this week I, I'm having a. As the temperatures get warmer, we have, you know, and the humidity goes up, got an air conditioner, and the air conditioner uh, unit is not that old. It's oh, 10 years old. And uh, had a technician come in, and he said, yeah, he said, you have to replace the, the cooling coils in it. And I thought, really, my dad used to work in that. So I called my dad and said, Dad, that doesn't make any sense at all. And he's like, no, not really. And then I, I talked to the technician, and the technician said, yeah. He said, these things are only rated for 10 years. <laughs> because it, it, it's it's a, it's a, it's an aluminum as opposed to a metal coil it's an aluminum and then it all made sense I'm like yeah because of course you know it's cheaper yeah. it's you know my insight there was again it was like even something that I would think is built to last like a, a home device that's meant to no it's not it, it's built for just you know secondary replacement so. <laughs> so we are kind of building products or services with the in the timing aspect of the insights, but yet insights we leave them forever. This kind of like <laughs> paradoxical, paradoxical way of looking at uh, yeah. at at the process. Because I uh, I um, I'm guilty myself. I still have in my uh, digital library reports from I don't know five or ten years ago that are called insights, and I sometimes go to them, but. Now, I mean, why would I? <laughs> These things were meant for then, not now. And uh, mm. yeah, I mean, all the all the uh, management consultancies and all these uh, reports that are published, um, they should be retired almost. Mm. Some are universal, but others are just like, uh, I don't know. That's meant so true. For the, meant for the day, not not forever. Yeah. Well, that's interesting in itself, just the the transitory, if you want to call it that, nature of insights on how you're right, like an amazing, incredible idea um, 15 years ago might no longer be relevant you hmm. know, anymore. But can it be an insight anyway that's... You know that, that looking at the past, how yeah. it was, you know, how you you organize some of the ideas, looking at, at uh, yeah. what you used to consider to be true at this time, you know. Oh, that's well. Here's a thought experiment. So imagine somebody was um, born on a desert island in the middle of the Pacific. And they've never had access to scientific knowledge or anything like that. And, and maybe they're in a small tribe. So if we think about this as a small tribe of people, they're living on, they have no contact with the outside world. And one day someone sits on the beach and they look out over the horizon and they go, I think our world is round. <laughs> I don't think it's flat. There seems to be a curve there. And they're and 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 the other members of the tribe are like, well, that doesn't make any sense. How does that even work? <laughs> Why do? How are we on a? a, a but and, and then so the, so the person may have an insight <laughs> that the rest of the world has, yeah. But because they have had no contact with anyone else in this thought experiment, it's a true insight. The reason I say that I'm thinking about that is how often people have di have sort of discovered something that's been discovered many, many times over, mm -hmm. but they had no idea it had been discovered. Like it, it's, it's an mm -hmm. insight that's independent of anything else. Mm -hmm. uh, hmm. But it's strange wanting to take credit for insight. I think it's one of the European struggles, mm -hmm. you know, they are so infatuated with such a humbling experience. <laughs> That's probably why it happens when yeah. you don't work at it, when you give up on it. Uh, and just to tell you that it's not your total merit, it's gonna come to you when, yeah, you, yeah it's not It's not a matter of effort. 
Uh, and I think this is uh, really powerful because we are surrounded by insights, whatever we go, whatever we do, mm. as long as we have this capacity to look at the world and you know, interact with it. But it's, I think there is a certain blockage in our own flow because we are stopping ourselves all the time. We are so fascinated with one insight that we pay so much attention to that, that, you know, the like half of the world's insights just pass uh, by us. So. Well, sure. it, yeah, that, that, that's, that's related that's to the, to the writers, uh, you know, to, to the thing that they, they, they are blocked, they, this blank page, uh, mm -hmm. you know, fear. It's like, we have to write the, you know, the, the article. Exactly. The, the one, the one yeah. I, I will be, you know, known for. <laughs> well, There's something like that, right? It, it's, it's, uh, I'll draw again on Seth Godin just because I've, you know, he, he, he's so prolific. But one of the things he also said that I, I, I really enjoyed was he said, 50% of all everything I write is below average to him. And I, I just kind of laughed at that. I'm like, of course. <laughs> so, so if we're thinking about our best writing, you know, if we, if we do 10, 10 articles, half of them are going to be below average. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, uh, was that study about like what makes up a genius and, mm -hmm. you know, what's the difference. Yeah. And it turned out that it wasn't that these guys were just producing high quality work. No, they just had produced so much work that some of it yeah. had to statistically be higher quality than the others. Whereas, you know, most people don't get past that mm. line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and th that's really critical because it's true. Like the best, you know, that 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 often used expression in design is that if you want to have good ideas, have lots of ideas. But yeah. if we bring it back to intuition, I'm thinking, what does this mean? Because intuition does it mean you you need lots of it, or does it mean that we have to be more open? and willing to be vulnerable and when we don't know just to like stay open and say something good should happen at, at some point in time we just don't know when <laughs> uh, which makes it uh, yeah weird especially in the in the business context to have an engagement and tell the client you don't know <laughs> but something good is going to happen uh, trust me something's going to happen it's going to be great <laughs> yeah. we just don't yeah. know what and when and what value? <laughs> mm. But that, that's, that's, what is a, that's what an insight, the true insight is just like that. It's when you almost give up on a, on a certain analysis or whatever you're doing that something clicks. But it is, in my yeah. experience, at least at the time when I least expect something to happen, most likely when I'm very frustrated to a point of giving up, uh, so yeah. <laughs> the truth is like that. I, I know we don't talk like this but, in, the, but, in the business context, but... But don't you think you needed this time where you were frustrated and, <laughs> and then... I, I do, but I, I think somehow we are hiding this from the from the customer or the client, this yeah. complexity that happened. And it's almost, we kind of give it a certainty that it will happen, whereas we actually don't know. <laughs> we don't know if it's if it's possible. We, we we pretend that we do and I was thinking when it comes to intuition mm. sometimes we kind of know that this is almost a dead end but we still go along um, yeah well there's hope that's the other thing is sometimes is the, is the hope is that our you know what, what we think is going to happen might actually happen um, mm. and the, in, into a, yeah. Yeah. It's always in inside, you know, it's insight <laughs> is insight, intuition. It's everything kind of comes from within, from this yeah. inner yeah. capacity. I think this is a very human dimension to it. It's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you might say that animals and trees, everything, they are pure intuition, they are pure intelligence. I don't, if we are more fragmented than the rest of nature or maybe the rest of the universe because we cannot possibly fathom uh, all the implications. We're kind of stuck in our intellect. Uh, and I think these uh, realizations that the world can be like that, 
it's uh, they are, they are more powerful so to us as uh, as we grow through them otherwise we wouldn't be able to evolve if we didn't have insights if the first uh, man let's say you know they didn't realize that oh fire we can use fire that could yeah. have been a first major insight creativity surface from you know the round uh, inventing the round wheel uh, so yeah. that you know it, it gets us thinking about how fundamental insights are and how little we know about them yeah 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 yeah, yeah there's a degree of mystery to the idea of insight mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it reminds me in some way what what Dave Snowden talks about, uh, you know, acceptation that we, you know, we we have some information about a certain context and we use it in another context and this creates this uh, new ways, this, uh, mm -hmm. this uh, innovation in some in some way, like uh, you know, like you you. Imagine you just discovered that your your rock can roll when it's mostly you know mainly round, <laughs> and you say, "Ha, ah, that's really interesting." Because last time I was you know t you know uh, uh, grabbing some a lot of of things that was really heavy, and this might help. But then there's no direct you know links between your rock and this context of you were expecting to 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 move uh, heavy, you know, heavy stuff, you know, you, you created this link. The insight is here when you, you transpose things, right? But it some, somehow happens when you are really willing to experiment and to, to improvise. This whole idea of jazz and how improvisation happened that you also need the, the others. Here we didn't quite speak uh, of, the, of the team dynamics, but I think insights yeah. are really powerful when when you have a team to bounce ideas around and you're not by yourself <laughs> because <laughs> by yourself uh, yeah, yeah, it's really difficult this was an example to to say that we we need passing you know we need the, our past um uh experience in some way to create to have the, those insights so it, it's not necessarily something that we we can do alone but this is like jazz like you if you never played at all any instrument you cannot play jazz at all right you, you need some kind of you need a, a, um, an experience of what is this, what it is to play mm. and then just uh, create the space where there is no constraints uh, that you can explore and the others will set some of the constraints of the environment right this is the the the, 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 the jazz what is hard for people to understand when to play jazz right it's a uh, Something you have to 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 trust the other to trust the others and uh, but you need an amount of experience of what it is to play to do it. It's not something that a, a, just a beginner can. I don't feel like it's something a beginner can do easily. It has to to come with experience. So it's it's funny to to see how it relates to to past exp you know experience to create this opportunity to to merge it with your with another context with a new context but is this formula of so many variations you know i look at what we're doing at the moment and yeah. there are so many ways everything <laughs> happens uh, and i think this is quite the the enlightening experience with the mm -hmm. more insights you get you realize that you don't have to look for the right way you just look mm -hmm. for the way for a way and it's fine you can simply go along for a while and then see what comes next and you just <laughs> jump in these you know infinite uh, variation because i think what's powerful is that the world can be in those ways already with or without your contribution yeah. and when you actually see a fit when it's you know, you you get a validation, a confirmation from uh, mm. your life. It's it's mm. it's just, yeah. It's you can't wish for more. <laughs> like, oh my God, I am right. That's the conclusion you get. <laughs> Which I don't know if is the healthy one. But uh, 
because I'm thinking about Leonardo da Vinci, you know, he he was definitely a very, you know, very much a designer, like, you know, in the modern way, we yeah. hope, we all hope to aspire, we aspire to, to become. And he wasn't particularly interested in really painting. He was curious about, the, you know, the, the multiple ways you could do it and how and, you know, invested time and creativity in that way he wasn't interested so much in the end results but in the possibilities how much can you stretch and how much can you observe the world around you and you know learn to build it with your mm -hmm. own resources true mm. that's true and also to be to be really open to to learn uh and not just from the others but from from nature the more I look at this, the more I see almost the sea ocean. <laughs> I recently watched this movie about octopus, my teacher, and I just, uh, I just see this uh, beautiful uh, ocean forest uh, uh, on our page. I don't know why, but uh, <laughs> these uh, these shapes they remind me of the seashells and the the other creatures around. Oh, I thought this is a bird here. Like... Yeah. I've been working very hard to make a it look like a bird. Then seashell there's a opening. peak, you know, and there's like a. Yes, me too. But... I see a bird running, like. You know, yes. Like, it's really but... funny. Yeah. Right. This is this is the nature of, of you know in many ways the nature of insight. It's it's like the patterns you're seeing patterns in that, and I think the insight is whether or not there's. You know, do we see more meaning in a bird or do we see it more in something else or? For me, it's the seashell. And this is actually an, an octopus or a kind of it. The one that you call the bird head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> With these te texicles that it has. Yeah, I don't know. But um, <laughs> that's funny. So that shows it's, another uh, it's thing. Very, it's very rich, Yeah. if anything. The world of insights it's, uh, it's very rich you just have to you have to see and somehow yeah. make it meaningful to you i'm very dependent just you know to draw back to what kevin said it's very dependent on how we use our past how you know mm. what we've been fed with and what are we feeding on mm. on a daily basis so you know because you watched that documentary and it really stuck <laughs> with you maybe that's why your perception has been shaped whereas we didn't yeah. you know get exposed to it quite recently so we see it differently and i think that's what it goes you know being able to constantly feed yourself with new things and the right things that are meant for you will help you see more insights or you know, on a certain pattern. So, certain yeah, types of patterns. this is like a coral reef. I see it everywhere. I see these little <laughs> things here. I see the this Form like a almost like a spider web, even though I'm sure <laughs> it's not in the water. But never mind. Uh -huh. Yeah, for me, it's more like a circus, you know, with animals uh -huh. everywhere and <laughs> some kind of playground here. And so it's, I don't know. It's like a yeah, or um, uh, you know. Um, a maze for 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 kids something like that you know something that meant to be cut off one and <laughs> and funny <laughs> something like that i don't know <laughs> yeah what does it look like to you cameron ah uh, well it's it's interesting it, it doesn't <laughs> it almost looks a lot like actually a print that i i have that i i got while i was in finland i uh it's it's so at the top I see things like a, a canopy. I see um, I definitely see things like bird, but I was almost <laughs> thinking about butterfly yeah. there. Um, I see like a cup. I see cups over here, and then it kind of <laughs> spins down to almost like a spider. Like I see so many different things about nature and and plants. And I can see the octopus kind of theme thing as well. But I, um, I, d I don't, you know, it's funny. I don't have a coherent vision of that. Like I see leaves. Hmm. I see built things. I, yeah, it, it, it's not coherent for me. That, and that isn't a criticism. It's, a, it's just I see like little pockets of, of things, meaning of insights, if you will. 
What really strikes me is this pair of uh, glasses that are looking actually outside. <laughs> they're not looking even at us. They're looking somewhere else. So yeah. that's yeah. a nice metaphor of uh, how we should approach insights, that it is not what is really in front of you, uh, but it's somewhere else. So you have to be open to find this other place uh, mm. for inspiration, whatever yeah. that is, that is not not so obvious. Because the way you did it, it's like, uh, yeah, it's looking towards the non-obvious, where the insight is, actually. Yeah. I think uh, the the glasses are looking towards the insight. But, uh, <laughs> so I think one, one interesting thing about those uh, eyes and glasses, uh, it, made, it got me thinking about the distinction of actually looking at something and seeing something. Mm. When you look at something, you have the intent, you have certain expectations, you bring yeah. your frame, maybe unconsciously most of the time, uh, and then you see some bits of that world or not. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But then you just look at something and just see it, just plain straight see it like Cameron, you know, it didn't want to find a unifying uh, picture. It was just the diversity of everything. There was no point and solidifying perhaps uh, mm. and i think that's what seeing is like it's uh being aware of your perspective or how you could spin all this into a narrative and also leaving it untouched and you know perhaps come back another time and look at it again and see if another insight is waiting for you <laughs> it's like taking a you know a look at uh a piece of art and trying to you know t distinguish each day a new a new thing that you never noticed yeah. before yes. yeah yeah <laughs> well i'm really proud of a piece of art in fact it's, yeah. it's really it's really amazing what we can do when yeah when we are thinking and discussing at the same time that we are drawing together it's like yeah it's, it's really incredible oh. yeah very interesting. And the fascinating thing about this drawing is if it was only one person to draw it, you'd probably consider that person clinically insane. <laughs> 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 but it's because yeah. we are together, this is more meaningful. We are well, a yeah. <laughs> it is acceptable and meaningful. <laughs> I kind of broke the rule because I was supposed to be either a line or a dot, but then I felt like a curve lines too, so uh. Uh, <laughs> well, but that, but that's so interesting is is that at at times like i know even just myself i was sitting there started out thinking with circles about sort of had this idea of imagining pa patterns i didn't know if i was seeing any but i was imagining them and thinking about where might a point of insight be if this was a pattern and then i started to kind of drift towards creating my own patterns and then sort of doing a bit of back and forth and that I thought was kind of an interesting thing about building off others mm -hmm. because, and I also was noticing with other people, some of it looked ra rather intentional in the sense of it looking mm -hmm. to create something. And then sometimes it was just about a shape and sometimes I wasn't even sure. And that's what's so interesting about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very interesting. Very interesting as always. <laughs> so how do we yeah. call that? I call that the drawing jam, but what is it? What what name would you give it? Of this experience of um, uh, emergent... I you know, there's, there's something with uh, thinking aloud and maybe drawing aloud or yeah. something like that. You know, it's, it's like it's out of our minds directly on, yeah. on these boards. Uh, like drawing aloud, drown. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drawing aloud. Well, maybe that's something we work on. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what the name for this is. Yeah, this would be cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, well, I, I think we'll end uh, the the session right now. But yeah. I can just say thank you to all of you because it was amazing and thank you Kazi and Diana to organize yeah proposing this and and we did it we we say okay we let's try it and yes. we did it and it was just 
Wow, I think we wow. should do it again. I'm, uh, yes. I really like it a lot. I, uh, I didn't participate yeah. with you last time around. So I, I kind of felt jealous, but uh, now that <laughs> I've seen it, I really like it. And we just need to find yeah. another interesting topic to like uh, bounce yeah. the little ideas and see what will happen next time. Mm -hmm. Let's yeah. think about that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's mm. fantastic. <laughs> I will, uh, I will extract our <laughs> insight and send you guys the image. Uh, yeah, it's almost like a piece of art for sure. Yeah. Yes. Kevin, it would be interesting what your kids would say about that. What would yeah. they say? <laughs> that's a good. That's a good point. I, I will show them, and let's see what this they, they see. <laughs> In fact, yeah. what are the insights it's, we can get from them, there? Make them make them see. You know, like tell you all the patterns they can see inside the drawing. I'm really curious. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I will do. See if uh, they see my octopus and seashells. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah or is, yeah. if she distinguished the birds. I, yeah, or the bird. <laughs> now that you mentioned the influencer. Bird, right? yeah. No, I will not say anything. I will just say, okay, look at this. Tell me what you see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That will be really funny. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, cool. very well. Thank you very much. Keep well, Thank everyone. You. Take Thank care. You. See you next Thanks time. So bye bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> bye. Bye bye.